Hour. Cumbria has suspended temporary Chief Constable Stuart Hyde will return to work but in his substantive post as Deputy Chief Constable it follows a year suspended on full pay and two investigations which cleared him of misconduct but Cumbria's Police and Crime Commissioner Richard Rhodes said he felt there were still questions to be answered and wanted Mr Hyde to resign or retire but as Deputy Chief Constable the role he reverted to last Friday his role no longer fell under the remit of the PCC And today, the current temporary Chief Constable, Bernard Lawson, says he'll be back at his desk next Monday in a managed return to work. Mr Hyde says he's happy to improve his behaviour and glad to be going back to policing. And he's drawing a line under the last 12 months. He does say, though, he will retire at the end of the year. This is what Richard Rhodes, Cumbria's Police and Crime Commissioner, told me earlier this evening when I asked him if the public were right to wonder what was the difference between his expenses issues and Mr Hyde's. These are two very different cases. In terms of the, your words, expenses scandal, I admitted that that was a mistake. I came clean on that. That was a mistake. It was a one-off mistake. We're talking about something here which is very different. I want to move on briefly uh, to your handling of the situation. It's taken till today, almost a week after your announcements, to speak publicly about the county's chief constable and your decisions. Do you think that's the correct way to conduct your office, considering you were voted into place by the people of Cumbria, who've had to wait a very long time for an answer, not just a week, in actual fact, almost a year? Well, they haven't asked, haven't had to wait for just about a year to get an answer from me. But yes, uh, there was no, I was not rushing to the studio last week to explain what was happening, certainly. Uh, The reason for that is that I think everybody will understand that there are times when you have to take a much more measured approach. And it's inappropriate to actually come out in public and say some things in order to allow the process to continue in an unhindered fashion. Because at that stage we were still discussing legal affairs and legal implications as to what I was doing, I was advised by legal authority, by my solicitor, that I should not speak in public until such time, if you like, the air being cleared. That was done this morning. I'm here straight away. So that was Richard Rhodes, Cumbria's Police and Crime Commissioner. On the line now is Paul West, the former Chief Constable of West Mercia, who now runs the not-for-profit organisation Policing for All, which provides independent advice to police and crime commissioners and police and crime panels. So Paul Stuart Hyde is back at work, but he will retire at the end of the year. Mr Rhodes, has he got his way? Um... I, I don't know, really. I, I'm not quite sure exactly what Mr. Rhodes' way was. Um, it's interesting to hear him talk about responding in a measured way to circumstances such as this. Um, to me, you know, initiating a process uh, which has never been done before, a process to, re- to require a chief constable to resign or retire, when Mr. Rhodes himself said th- that he only had three days, Stuart Hyde only had three days left to run in his contract. In other words, he initiated what would have been a very expensive legal process with just three days to run. I, I mean, that doesn't seem remotely measured to me. That seems a really bizarre sort of decision to have taken, and, and one which, had the temporary chief constable today not seen sense, could have incurred additional expenses to the taxpayers of Cumbria. So do you think it could have been handled better? Oh, I'm very clear it could have handled, be handled very differently, uh, yeah. And it, it's really important now that the police and crime panel, who have a role in scrutinising decisions of police and crime commissioners, look very, very carefully at the decision-making that led up to uh, the circumstances that we were faced with last week. Um, you know, Mr Rhodes, quite rightly, was able to assess the evidence, as, as he put it, to, to read the small print. Uh, I'm not entirely sure which small print he's referring to. I, of course and many others have read the executive summary of the report that he put out last week. Nobody's had the opportunity to read the small print in the full report because he's chosen not to release that yet and has insisted on people submitting Freedom of Information Act uh, requests. So hopefully we will get the chance to read the small print that he refers to in due course. But it's a very strange way of approaching things to make a decision to say, OK, I'm going to go against the Chief Constable's recommendation. I, I believe that there is misconduct made out in three areas, but then simply to set that aside and not pursue the misconduct process. That's a very, very strange thing to have done. Uh, And again, when he was interviewed last week and and when he made the statement last week, 
the impression given was that that could have been a very lengthy and expensive process. Uh, a misconduct meeting can be organised within a very short space of time. There's minimal expense because it doesn't involve lawyers. So the three areas where he felt misconduct was made out and Chief Constable Peter Vaughan from South Wales didn't could easily and quickly have been tested and that would have been the correct way of handling things. And to put Stuart Rhodes through um, additional pressure, sorry, Stuart Hyde through additional pressure in the way that he did last week, um, I just think that was completely unnecessary and I'm very, very pleased that the temporary chief consul, Bernard Lawson, has seen sense and has responded in a very proportionate and I think a very speedy and fair way today so that people can move on and get back to what they should be doing, which is focusing on the policing of Cumbria. Paul, before you go, I asked Richard Rhodes whether or not he was just flexing his muscles. What do you think to that? Well, it's your phrase, not mine, but I, I, I would ask anybody to reflect on why would anybody initiate a process that's never been done before to require the resignation or retirement of somebody from a post which they're going to be leaving in three days' time in any event. I mean, it just, it's completely unnecessary and could have been handled much, much more differently. I mean, it would be very interesting to know from Richard Rhodes whether he ever actually sat down with Stuart Hyde last week to say, Stuart, what are your plans? You know, there are issues here which we need to talk about, things that you've done that perhaps you shouldn't have done or could have been done differently, but what are your plans now? I'd be very interested to know whether that conversation happened because Stuart Hyde himself could have retired this weekend. He's, he's completed his service in, in policing. He, he's now indicated he intends to serve till the end of the year. But there are many, many ways in which the process could have been handled, I think, much more tactfully, much more sensibly, uh, and, and in, a, in a measured way, in the way that Richard Rhodes indicated he had done. I, I'm not sure I would describe it as measured. Um, but that's for the police and crime panel now to look at. I think they have a really uh, important role on behalf of the public of Cumbria to, to call for evidence, to scrutinise in detail the decision-making of the Police and Crime Commissioner so that, you know, if circumstances, and let's hope that they don't, but if circumstances like similar to this were to arise in Cumbria or elsewhere, then the lessons of last week, and there has to be some lessons, can be learnt so we're not faced with such a, a bizarre situation again that, as I say, thankfully, the temporary Chief Constable Bernard Lawson has seen sense and has come to a very sensible uh, and fair resolution. Paul, thank you very much for joining us on the News Hour. That's Paul West, the former Chief Constable of West Mercia, who now runs the not for profit organisation Policing for All. He mentioned the uh, police and crime panel there. We will, of course, be in touch with Celia Tibble, who is the chairman, to request an interview with her.